Hello, everyone, and welcome to Blogging Theology. Today, I'm delighted to talk again to Sheikh Hamza Karamali. You're most welcome, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Thank you for having me, Paul. Great to have you back, sir. Um, for those who don't know, Hamza is a traditionally trained theologian who specializes in arguments for the existence of God and the truth of Islam. He is the founder of Why Islam is True, where he trains scholars, imams, school teachers, and parents how to use rational arguments to show their students and children why Islam is true. Now, as we now know, the holy month of Ramadan is upon us, and Hamza is hosting a free Ramadan challenge to help you make a personal change this Ramadan that will last forever. And I put the link in the description to that below. It's taught live, and all the sessions are recorded, so you can join anytime during the month month of Ramadan. And Ramadan isn't just a month of fasting, though. It's also a month of prayer, often intense prayer, which takes place during the night. And today, Hamza will be uh, talking to us about the most special night in Ramadan, called by many people the Night of Power, which Muslims consider to be the spiritual peak of the month of Ramadan. So I'd like to begin with perhaps a very basic question to you, Hamza. We're talking about the night of power, but why night? Why not during the day? So worship at night has been the mark of Islamic spirituality since the time of the Prophet wasallam. So in the early Meccan period, it was obligatory on the Prophet and also on the companions to spend half of the night or most of the night in prayer, standing in prayer. So there's a surah in the Quran called Surah Al-Muzzammil. It begins, Ya ayyuhal muzzammil, qumil layla illa qalila. O you who are wrapped up, stand in prayer at night, all of it, except a little bit. Qumil layla illa qalila. Nisfahu awin minhu qalila. Half of it or reduce it a little bit, a little bit less than half. And it mentions that there, there were the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they also used to stand at night in prayer. So uh, the this was later, the obligation was lifted from the companions, but it remained an obligation on the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's a verse in the Quran that says, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ And uh, for part of the night, do tahajjud with the Quran. Tahajjud in the Arabic language, it comes from hujud. Hujud means sleep. And tahajjud means to remove sleep. So the act of spirituality, worship, is going to sleep and then waking up when it's most difficult to uh, to wake up um, and removing sleep and making the ablutions and standing in prayer at night, worshiping God, prostrating to him. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he um, described this as a practice that was the practice of the Jews and the Christians before mm -hmm. the Muslims. So there's a hadith in which he said that Alaikum bi qiyam layl adhere to standing in prayer at night. Fa innahu qablakum, which means that it was the regular practice of the righteous people before you. It was the regular practice of the Jews and Christians before you. And then he mentioned in the hadith also that it brings you close to your Lord, it erases your sins, and it keeps you from sinning during the day if you if you pray during the night. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's interesting. I mean, it's it's hardly ever happens anymore. I think amongst Christians, anyway. Um, although it does happen, but it's 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 pretty marginal. I remember when I was a a Christian, a, a Catholic Christian, I used to go on retreats to a monastery uh, on the Isle of Wight called Quo Abbey. Uh, it actually, it's an amazing building. It's actually very Islamic. I didn't realize that at the time when I used to go there. But um, the architecture is clearly influenced by Islamic architectural practices. Um, but there, the monks uh, have what's called offices. They pray seven times throughout the day and the night as well. And the night prayer uh, just after dark is called Compline, the office of Compline. I remember that. We we always to attend that with the monks. And uh, just before dawn, there's a, a, the 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 uh, the prayer office is called vigils. These are two 
uh, mm. times when monks pray. So, but they're, they're quite very few people, are obviously monks uh, or, or nuns in the Christian world. But perhaps the more popular one is the midnight mass, um, where basically the beginning of midnight when Christmas Eve becomes uh, Christmas Day, and that's attended by uh, a lot of people. Well, that's just once a year, obviously, just before Christmas Christmas Day. And, and that's it, really. Uh, it's certainly not widely practiced outside of those two contexts, I think. Yeah, um, so these would be remnants, uh, prayer at night, remnants of prayer at night that mm. the Jews and the Christians used to have. So I think it's important to see the Muslim historical sources, historical accounts of the Jews and Christians before Islam or in the Arabian Peninsula as historical accounts. Uh, you know, we have change of transmission. Um, the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned this. And before the Prophet as well, um, there were people who, who described the Jews and Christians in the Arabian Peninsula. There were Jews, there were Christians in the Arabian Peninsula. Very interesting, very interesting Jews. Uh, there were the Himyarite Jews. There was a Jewish kingdom in ancient Arabia. And these were not ethnic Jews. They were Arabian Jews. So there was a conversion process that they went through to become Jewish, which is very different from what we see today. Um, it, much more difficult to convert. Um, and the Christians that are described in the Arabian Peninsula were also very different. Um, so the Christians in Sira literature, Islamic literature, they are uh, shown, they're portrayed in a very worshipful, very spiritual light. Mm -hmm. So there was a Christian community in a town in present day Saudi Arabia called Najran. It's in Southwest Saudi Arabia. And it has, uh, you know, according to Muslim, Muslim accounts, it was the earliest Christian community. And in the Sira literature, they describe how Christianity came there. And there was somebody called Fimian, and he used to pray at night for very long hours. And uh, he would, uh, it's very interesting, they describe him that he would go into a community and he would, he was a builder. He was, he had a, a very humble profession, uh, but he was also a healer. Many, many Christian uh, saints were healers. He was a healer and he was he used to worship God and he would stay there until he was discovered for his piety. And then he would run away and go to some other some other town and do the same thing. And he'd go from town to town until he landed in Najran. And then uh, he was uh, uh, he was uh, he was in, in the home of maybe somebody captured him, enslaved him or something. But um, he but he would pray at night. And then the, these are these are legends. These are legends. They don't have chains of transmission. But this is the memory. This is the memory of Christianity uh, that the. Uh, people in Arabia had when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came. So in their memory, this man, Fimian, he, uh, he, he prayed at night and he prayed it and there was a light that fills the room as a result of his, of his praying at night. Um, and there's also hadith that describe how the children of Israel, they used to pray at night. So, uh, so the, this, this memory of spirituality, of praying at night for the sake of God, is kind of like fasting. Because there's a hadith in which uh, the Prophet says that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that my, this slave of mine, my slave, when we fast during the day, he leaves his uh, sexual desires and his desire for food for my sake. And so um, I will personally reward him for the act of fasting. And so the idea here in fasting is that we prefer out of an act of love we prefer God over our own desires. Mm -hmm. And so that same reality is found in prayer at night, mm -hmm. that even though we want to sleep, we prefer God over our sleep. I'm saying we, I have a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, we in the general sense, and doesn't necessarily include me. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still have, uh, I'm still trying to improve. Uh, but these are wonderful stories. I love them and I love, um, I love these people and I, and I uh, look up to them. And uh, Jesus, you know, I remember um, I read uh, the Gospels as a Muslim uh, a long time ago. And um, he stands out as somebody who is very deeply spiritual, a very deeply spiritual person. And there's, he, he has that image in uh, Muslim spiritual 
literature, and he's presented as somebody who is deeply spiritual. And there's a passage in the Gospels where he prayed all night. Um, it's not frequently mentioned, but it's it's there. And uh, so, uh, so, so the memory of Christianity in the Muslim tradition is this very spiritual praying at night memory. I mean, now you mentioned the beginning of the gospel. I think it may be the gospel of Mark or Luke. I can't remember quite, but it, it betrays Jesus as praying uh, before dawn, you know, at the very, very yeah. early, uh, actually. Yeah. And, and of course, just innocently reading that, you never get the impression that there was a trinity or he was God incarnate because he was clearly a, a pious Jew who was praying to the, to God as, as, God. as, as they did. Yeah. So it's a natural thing. I, I know it sounds, and that's a very Islamic thing to do, but it doesn't really fit in uh, with later Trinitarian ideology. But that's, of course, a separate subject, just to struck. Yeah. But what wasn't that night prayer um, of, of uh, the, the Prophet Muhammad, uh, upon whom be peace, later? Wasn't that the beginning of revelation for the Prophet, you know, in the yeah. revelations in the cave? Yeah, exactly. So the in Bukhari, uh, the it says that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when before he received revelation, his first revelation, he uh, he seclusion was made beloved to him. He wanted to be alone, mm -hmm. and uh, and so he would go and he would be alone in a cave called the cave of Hira, and mm -hmm. he would worship there he would worship god there and the hadith says for many nights not many days but many nights meaning he would worship god at night mm -hmm. scholars aren't sure exactly how he worshiped because he, he hadn't been taught to prostrate and recite quran hadn't been revealed um they have various uh, positions we're not sure but there was some kind of worship that he was inspired to do and it was during this worship in the month of ramadan on Laylatul Qadr, which is what we're uh, you know, talking about uh, yeah. in this session, that he received his famous first revelation when um, the angel came and squeezed him and said, recite. And he said, I, 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 I'm not a reciter. I can't recite. And he squeezed him three times. And then the first, the first verses were revealed. So uh, the month of Ramadan is, uh, is a, it's a reenactment of that first revelation because in the month of ramadan uh the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would go into seclusion just as he would go in the he used to go in the um in the cave before he received revelation there's a special kind of seclusion that happens in this month it's called i'tikaf where muslims they will normally spend the last 10 nights of ramadan a group of them they'll go and they'll sleep in the mosque and they'll stay there Mm -hmm. And uh, they will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It it's a prophetic practice and, and righteous people have done that. So a group of Muslims, they, they revive this practice. And it is, uh, it's, it's what the Prophet was doing when the revelation came. And they're actually searching for Laylatul Qadr, uh, the night of power as it's, as it's popularly uh, called. And that was the night when the Quran was first revealed to the mm -hmm. Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa mm. Yeah, I was going to ask what was so special about Layla al Qadar, how, how it's different from other nights during uh, Ramadan or, or, the, or the year. But you, you're saying that that night was the night of power when the Quran itself was initially uh, revealed to, to the Prophet. Yeah, so there's a chapter of the Quran. It's called Surah Al Qadr. And in this chapter, short chapter towards the end of the Quran, it says, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Verily, we revealed the Quran in Laylatul Qadr, in the eve of, of Qadr. So mm. scholars, they actually, they, they have various positions about the meaning of Qadr. Um, although it's popularly called the night of power, mm. power isn't one of the popular interpretations. Normally what they say is, they give one of two positions that are the most, the strongest positions. One position is that Qadr means value. Um, and in, in modern Arabic, Qadr, the straightforward meaning of it is value. So it's called the Layla of Qadr, the eve or the night of Qadr, because it's extremely, extremely, extremely valuable. Right. Uh, and um, another interpretation is Qadr. Qadr means destiny. And uh, so it's the night of destiny. And uh, uh, many scholars of tafsir, although some disagree, they held that on this night, uh, the 
decrees the destiny of the coming year is revealed to the angels. So destiny is something, according to Islamic belief, it's something that is, it, it reflects God's knowledge. And that's something that God knows since beginningless eternity. So it's not something that is discovered year by year. But, yeah. but what he knows since beginningless eternity, there are then, uh, there are then commands that come down uh, to the angels. And the angels are the beings that realize the decrees of God. And so they get their yearly commands, their yearly set of commands that you'll take this person's life here and you will um, go and save somebody here. And then you'll go and send down the rain here and you'll do this and you'll do that. They get their their um, their uh, uh, commands on this night. Uh, and so uh, according to those who believe, who hold that uh, that this happens on this night, Laylatul Qadr will be the night of decree. Right. So uh, so it's the night of decree or the night of value. And um, this surah, this chapter of the Quran, it mentions that on this night, angels, they come down. They come down to uh, the earth in huge numbers. It says, The, the angels and the ruh, which is the spirit. So the Holy Spirit in, in the Quran is the angel uh, Gabriel. Um, and uh, so a lot of the, the terms that Christians use, and they became part of modern or Christian theology. Um, they have a they have an echo uh, in the Quran that they're used in a, in a in a different way. One of them is the Holy Spirit, means the angel Gabriel. And so the angels come down, and the greatest of the angels, Gabriel, he comes down to um, mm -hmm. to uh, to earth. Um, and the descent of angels is accompanied by the descent of mercy. And the surah says that it's a, a night of of peace. It's complete, completely, it's complete and utter peace. And um, and it says, and this is what we hear every year in in talks and in sermons and exhortations, that this night is better than a thousand mm -hmm. months. Yeah. Um, and they explain that by, that by saying that to worship um, God in this night is like worshiping him for 1000 months consecutively scholars they like to like ask questions that uh, people uh, you know the, the smart student afterwards asks because the question comes that well if you have a thousand months then those months every year you're going to have a laylatul qadr and so how can laylatul qadr be better than a thousand you know months they're going to have many different laylatul qadrs that's a logical contradiction so they explain that what that means is it's better than a thousand months in which there is no Laylatul Qadr ah. without, <laughs> without Laylatul Qadr. <laughs> yeah. And that's, the, that's the, the intent intent of the verse. So, so that's why the night is special. And it was the night uh, when the Quran was revealed. So, and that's why uh, the, Quran, the Quran is special. The Quran is special because this night, this very special night was chosen for the first revelation that the Prophet Muhammad received um, in uh, in the cave of Hira. And then after that, over a period of 23 years, it came um, in pieces in various occasions for, for, for revelation. So, but the night is popularly celebrated on the 27th, I think, isn't it? But that might not be the actual night. Is that right? Um, yeah. So uh, there are a number of different hadiths that have come on it and they're actually they're very nice um so i prepared them so i thought we'd read a couple these are all in the muatta uh my favorite uh oh the, the, the Murata, yes uh yeah, it's the of imam malik colossally <laughs> uh, <the> <laughs> heavy heavy translation there um, Murata, the new, the new translation yeah, so he has a he has a chapter on i'tikaf which is uh, he has a chapter on Lilatul qadr the chapter on the hadith that have come on um, on Laylatul Qadr, so the uh, one of these hadiths is uh, that uh, the first hadith actually it says that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam once he went into seclusion into the mosque mm. uh, on the first ten nights to uh, search for Laylatul Qadr, and that means that he's going to worship every night so that. Uh, one of them is going to be Laylatul Qadr. And then there's a hadith, a different narration of this hadith. I think it's in Bukhari. 
Um, it says that when it uh, he worshipped for the first 10 nights, then Gabriel told him that what you seek is ahead of you. So he worshipped the next 10 nights. And then after that, he said, Gabriel told him what you seek is ahead of you. And so he worshipped. So he worshipped the whole month, including the last 10 nights. But just before the last 10 nights, he said to his companions, he said that uh, he said he said that whoever has worshipped with me, whoever has worshipped with me for the middle 10 nights of Ramadan, let him stay with me for uh, uh, f let him stay with me. Um, let him stay with me and worship for the last 10 nights because I have been shown Laylatul Qadr. And then I was made to forget it. So this this mentions this is mentioned in several hadiths that he was sometimes shown as this night and then he was made to forget it. And there's a wisdom behind that. We'll talk about that. He was made to forget it. But he said that I, I saw in a dream that I saw myself prostrating in the morning uh, of that night on water and uh, and mud. So seek it in the last 10 nights and seek it in the odd nights. So the, the companions who narrate this hadith, they say that on the night of the 21st, the eve of the 21st, the night before the 21st. So th this was happening in the mosque of the Prophet. It's very nice. Um, I really enjoy reading these hadiths because it it um, describes um, how they lived and um, you know what what it was like. So they were all in the mosque. In the mosque, it wasn't. It had a thatched roof, mm. and it wasn't completely roofed. There was only part of it that was roofed. The rest yeah. of it was open. And the thatched roof was. Um, it wasn't completely waterproof. So when it rained, then water would come down, and there was no carpet. So they would um, they would worship. They would they would be there and they would worship. They had their they had a tent that they would set up. They would actually pit, pitch tent, oh. and that was where they would uh, they would go into their tent, and that's where they that's how they had some privacy and they would worship and they would be in the mosque, which is a holy place to be in. And so they the companions they said that the rain came on the night of the twenty first, and they saw the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prostrating, I guess just before dawn. And uh, on the on the mud and the rain, and they saw mud mud on his uh, on his uh, uh, nose and his forehead. Um, what a wonderful what a wonderful memory! And I sometimes wonder, you know, like the the, the, the Prophet sallallahu for him to worship this additional prayer at night was an additional obligation. If somebody had been an imposter, like a false prophet. Then they would have, uh, they would have made sure that they get the easy way out. I mean, all politicians, everybody in power, they all like find loopholes, take advantage of their, <laughs> their thing. But if you look at like the the Prophet وسلم, he had additional obligations, and one of them was this was this obligation of worship, and he went above and beyond, and um, and and he's prostrating not on a fine carpet, uh, but in the mud. And he is the messenger of God, um, and uh, that's something I've, I've never done. But mm. uh, Subhanallah. So, but what they get from that, what they get from that is that they say there's some scholars they say that Laylatul Qadr, because of this, it's on the night of the twenty-first, and that is um, the position of Imam Shafi'i. So Imam Shafi'i he said that Laylatul Qadr is on the eve of the twenty-first. There's another hadith. He mentions here in this hadith there was a bedouin uh, a very intelligent bedouin he came and he came to the prophet وسلم, and he said that i live far from medina so i can't come every day to worship with you so tell me one night mm -hmm. <laughs> i should come just one night and i'll come that night um what a what a what an intelligent way to try and figure out little yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> told him come on the night of the 23rd mm. so he came just that one night and he worshiped and this night used to be known he, that he was from a place called tribe called juhaina it was known in medina in the early period as the night of the juhani 
the person from 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 from, from Johanna, and they, they would and he would continue to come. He wouldn't he wouldn't come to pray in the mosque, uh, you know, for any other night. But he would come on the twenty third, and 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 he would worship that night. He wouldn't even come for Eid because he was a Bedouin and it's not obligatory for them to come. Uh, but he would come on the twenty third, and so many people they said it's it's on the it's on the twenty third. There's another hadith in which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that he was shown the night, and then he woke up and he found two Muslims arguing, and so he went to um, resolve the disagreement, and then he was made to forget it. He said, "So search for it on the twenty first or the twenty third, or the twenty fifth, according to one one interpretation." Um, and there's a famous uh, statement from one of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ubay ibn He used to swear, he used to swear by Allah that it's on the twenty seventh, and um, and uh, so so this is where many scholars, including Imam Abu Hanifa, they said it's it's on the it's on the twenty seventh. But if you look at all of the positions, uh, th there are some scholars they compiled all of the different positions, and they said that there's. 40 different scholarly positions on the other uh, because it's not just about which day um it's also about some some said that it's the same night every year others said that it's a different night every year mm. uh, some said that there are certain nights when it's more likely others said that it's equally likely on all nights mm. and there's many different grades of disagreement and so what ends up the practically speaking, what what people say is that we're not we're not really sure which night it is, uh, but it's in Ramadan, most likely in the last ten nights, most likely in the odd nights of the last ten nights. And the Prophet said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, search for it in the last ten nights and search for it in the odd ones of the last ten nights." And then they add that most likely on the twenty seventh. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, and and popularly that's why it's um it's uh muslims they they say it's the 27th and uh and that's like the summary of when when it's when the is so uh, we're not see, but if we're not if we're not sure when it is what does the average muslim do then i mean what does it mean to him so uh there are a number of acts of worship that are like this. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that on Friday, there is a time when if someone makes a prayer, it's undoubtedly answered. And he didn't specify it. So uh, what that results in is that we search for that time mm. throughout the day. And we, and when we have this searching for that time throughout the day, and we hope that that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will will make make our prayer coincide with that moment. So we so we spend as much of Friday as possible making that prayer. And similarly with Laylatul Qadr, we uh, we we spend as much as possible uh, uh, searching for it and as the Prophet himself used to do. And uh, they say that if if this tremendous night was specified and determinately known then everybody would just worship that night and that's it like you know you got a thousand nights then you know what's the point of, of <laughs> doing the rest of the rest yeah. of the month yeah. and the purpose of purpose of uh, of uh, uh, of re of religion is to be somebody who is worshipful to be to be a slave and that slavehood that is realized um, through searching, through worshiping, and um, and so that's the wisdom behind it, uh, behind it being hidden. Mm -hmm. I I heard from one of my teachers. He would say he would always emphasize that um, the the point of all of these uh, of Ramadan and the point of these uh, uh, you know the Laylatul Qadr and all all of this is to we learn something about who God is. And so God loves to forgive. He loves to give. So you, we learn something about his character. So we search, we search, and we we show our slavehood. And 
uh, and if we are we are searching for and we're going towards someone who is generous, then we believe that that uh, you know he's uh, he's not going to keep it from us if we <laughs> if we searched. I think there's one more thing I wanted to add. Just as uh, you know, it is uh, people sometimes say, do you have to worship the entire night? Or and you can like any amount is um, you know even two rakahs. Um, so whatever and obviously the prophet used to do a lot more. And the companions they used to do a lot more, and uh, we should all do as much as we can. But uh, but the, there are statements from the early Muslims saying that if you pray the the Isha prayer in congregation and the Fajr prayer in congregation on Laylatul Qadr, you've taken your share from Laylatul Qadr because uh, because uh, you know it's The beginning of the night and the end of the night and the mercy of God is tremendous. Now it's so um, it's good to uh, for us to search, do something, uh, pray a little bit. If we can pray more, we should pray more. And um, it's good to keep in mind uh, the the example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam spending the entire month of Ramadan in prayer, um, in rain, on mud. Mm. Um, you know, I don't think he he didn't have like a lavish iftar, he didn't have a lavish suhoor, and no. uh, it's a good um, inspiring example no for indeed. us to um, to keep in mind. So, um, so this is the peak of Ramadan, as you said. Um, it's the uh, there's a hadith in which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he urged us to seek seek it, and he said that if we miss it, we've missed out on a lot. So. Um, so inshallah, um, you know, I urge myself, I urge everybody else to to search for it. And that's one of the secrets of this blessed month. And at the time of recording this podcast, um, Ramadan just began here in just Istanbul. Began. Ex exactly. Yeah, it's just began here in London too, literally uh, a couple of uh, hours ago. Thank you very much indeed, Sheikh Hamza Karamali, for your very inspiring and interesting and scholarly uh, um, talk, actually. And I, I'm just going to conclude by saying to everyone, to yourself and everyone, to have a, a blessed Ramadan uh, this year. And uh, inshallah, we will have a wonderful time uh, in prayer and in fellowship and going to mosques and and uh, um, and reading the Quran. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to actually reading it through um, in one month, in, in, the, in the month of Ramadan this year. So looking forward to that later tomorrow, I think, beginning that pro project. Mm -hmm. So have a blessed blessed Ramadan, everyone. Um, until next time. Thank you very much. Oh,